What's up, everyone? This is Paul Garcia, ProjectSpurs.com, bringing you a video on the deals that the San Antonio Spurs made on July 1st on Saturday. I am recording this video at 1237 Mountain Time, so if there is any news that breaks, you all know I didn't address it. So let's go through how, how the Spurs' this Saturday went on um, the opening day of free agency July 1st here. Let's go ahead and uh, dive into I'm going to basically go in order here of how the um, the deals and the rumors basically came about throughout the day. So I'm going to kind of go in that timeline as, as the day went began. So first off was a very early trade that the Spurs um, uh, agreed to with the Cleveland Cavaliers and, and the um, Miami Heat. Um, according to um, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN.com, the Spurs will participate in a three-team trade with the Miami Heat and the Cleveland Cavaliers and where the Spurs are going to acquire Chetty Osman and Lamar Stevens and uh, Max Struess will end up going to Cleveland and then Miami um, basically gets uh, you know some draft assets from uh, out, out of this deal. So the Spurs again are going to uh, have Osman coming on board and Lamar Stevens coming on board uh, here soon. Now this this deal cannot take place until after July 6th. That's when the moratorium lifts because then um, that's when the Spurs' cap space would be available to absorb both these players, Osman and Stevens. And I'll get into uh, um, some details later about where the roster stands. But for now, Chetty Osman is coming um, to the Spurs and so is Lamar Stevens. Also some news after that was the uh, official signing of Victor Wembanyama. Uh, Wemby um, was allowed to sign his his uh, rookie scale contract. All, all first round draft picks were. Uh, that's one thing they can do right now during the moratorium. These first five days is sign their contract. So Wemby is officially a Spur. He's now signed his actual rookie deal. Rookie deal. Um, so he did that on Saturday. Then there was a very interesting um, tweet by Ramona Shelburne of uh, ESPN.com that really got everybody buzzing. So what happened was uh, early in the day on Saturday, Damian Lillard officially requested a trade. Um, and he initially said that he wanted to go to the uh, Miami Heat and Brooklyn Nets. Those are his two preferred options. Then uh, after that was reported, Ramona Shelburne of ESPN had this very interesting tweet. She was kind of uh, retweeting Woj and she said, the Heat is Lillard's preference here, but he also has a deep respect for the San Antonio Spurs organization, sources told ESPN. So, of course, that tweet comes out and everybody gets excited. You know, maybe Dame Lillard's going to, maybe the Spurs going to go after Dame Lillard. Um, and I, I'll just say that, you know, I haven't seen any reporting that the Spurs are interested in, in going after Dame Lillard. So that's one part of it. Part two is that, um, you know, the Spurs can definitely put, if they wanted to pursue Dame, they have probably the best um, package they can send to the, to the uh, Portland Trailblazers. They have young players. They have cap space where they just have to move one or two players to make that cap space to absorb his $45.6 million, um, million dollar contract for this coming season, even though it's like a, he has like three or four years left on the deal. And they also have a lot of draft picks. They have multiple first round picks, their own and other teams. But I would really advise you, um, if, you if you read the San Antonio Express News, Mike Finger, um, the columnist there, he, he wrote a really good article. Um, on you know some of the reasons why this probably isn't going to take place, and, and Finger really described it very well. Uh, he he, he uh, laid out different re reasonings for that. And so, like I said, right now, um, I haven't seen any reporting that the Spurs are interested in pursuing Dame. But again, if that happens, well, then we know that the Spurs can definitely put a really good package together. Probably the best package that Portland would get compared to the other offers that maybe Miami can send or Brooklyn or you know some of those other teams that might pursue Dame Lillard. So again, that was out there on Saturday. Uh, some news for Zach Hollins. He's good. It looks like his starting center job is pretty much still intact. So what ended up the reason why I'm saying that is because Jakob Pertl, who the Spurs reportedly had interest in, uh, ended up resigning with the Toronto Raptors, and so did Brooke Lopez, who ended up resigning with the uh, Milwaukee Bucks. So with Pertl and Brooke Lopez now off the free agent board, I don't see any free agents still out there as far as five centers that could that could basically bump Zach Collins out of the starting lineup. So right now, I would say that right now it looks like going into the um, training camp, Zach Collins is probably the Spurs' starting center. And this reflects what Coach Pop actually said before the Spurs' um, the Spurs' season ended. He had said Zach will be our starting center. Now this was of course before the Spurs um, knew they were going to draft Victor Wembanyama. So right now it looks like yes, unless they they make some sort of trade for a. For a, for a center, um, you know, a center who could probably start over Zach Collins. Right now, it looks like Zach will start be starting there at the five, and then Wemby will be the, right there starting alongside him at the four. So that's uh, just some some news in terms of um, some of the free agents that are off the board. And then one spur who is coming back is Sandro Mamu Kelishvili. This is a, a fan favorite early on. Uh, Mamu is his nickname. Um, so he's going to be returning to the Spurs on a one-year, two point one million dollar veteran minimum deal, according to Adrian Wojnarowski. Uh, Mamu coming back is not, I wouldn't say totally surprising to me, but I didn't really um, expect it after um, some signs. So let me, let me explain this, what I, what I mean here. So I was actually in San Antonio last Saturday at Wemby's press conference. And when I was there, Keldon Johnson, 
uh, Mamu and um, there was one other player in attendance. Uh, Kelden, Mamu, I don't know, I have the picture. Anyway, it's on my phone. Oh, <laughs> there was three players at that. Oh, Jeremy Sohan. Okay, okay, I'm not going to look it up. Okay, so Kelden, Sohan, and Mamu were all in attendance. And me seeing Mamu there, I was like, oh, the Spurs are definitely bringing him back. Well, then as transactions started taking place to prepare for free agency this coming week, I noticed that the Spurs did not tender him a qualifying offer, which means he went into unrestricted free agency. Basically, um, there was a chance they could lose him if he wanted to sign with whoever he wanted to. Well, it looks like, um, you know, the Spurs and, and Mamu were definitely in agreement and he and he did want to return. Um, there was some reporting from Tom Orsborne of the San Antonio Express News where Mamu basically told him he wanted to come back to San Antonio uh, very badly. And so, of course, that, that the Spurs were able to um, now make that happen. They were able to sign him. They're, they're going to sign him to a deal. So Mamu will be returning. And so those are basically the main transactions that took place on Saturday. Now, I do want to go into a question that I've been getting a lot. Um, and that's how many players are currently on the roster when all of these deals go down. So again, a lot of these deals can't be done until July 6th, once the moratorium lifts at, at a noon Eastern time. But for now, we can at least project what the Spurs' lineup is looking like. Um, so for, so right now on one column here, you, as you can see, I have guaranteed players. All these players uh, are, are reportedly going to have guaranteed deals. So these are even the new players like Trey Jones resigning, Justin Champagne, and Mamu. And then of course, when they trade for Chetty Osmond. So right now, um, by the time the regular season begins in October, you have to be down to 15 players on guaranteed deals and three players on two-way spots. But in the off season, you can carry on your roster up to 21 players. So right now, the Spurs do have 15 players guaranteed. Lamar Stevens, who they traded for, he is on a partially guaranteed deal for 1.9 million. And the Spurs don't have to make a decision on his, on his guarantee until um, January 10, 2024, according to Spotrack. We don't know exactly how much is partially guaranteed just yet that the that because that trade hasn't officially happened it can't happen until july 6th we, we haven't got those details but as far as salary at the spurs they're gonna have to waive someone this is just what it looks like they're gonna have to waive someone or trade someone and so right now i would i would assume it's stevens but again there's a lot of time between now and um the first day of um the regular season october and then when we start projecting the two-way roster spots uh, we do know that it's been reported that sir jabari rice will sign one of the two-way spots I don't know if CD Sissoko would get that second spot um, and then, or, or if he would get a full contract spot. So right now I'm projecting that he gets the two-way spot. And then of course, Dominic Barlow's still out there in restricted free agency where if he accepts that, that qualifying offer from the Spurs, then he can return on a two-way contract. Um, Dominic Barlow can. And so I would assume that, that those are the three players taking the two-way spot. So basically, yes, this team will have to either uh, waive a player or trade a player before um, opening day because they are um, over their max with 16 players on um, full NBA contracts. So that's kind of where the roster stands right now. And the final questions that I have are, or that I've been getting is, uh, where is the Spurs' cap sheet? You know, what does it look like now that they've made these moves on Saturday? What do they project to be? So... They are still projected to have the most cap space in the NBA, even after doing all these deals, where they're projected to be able to open up up to $26.8 million in cap space. That's a very interesting number because that is something to watch in the event that, um, I know that it's been reported um, some places that if the Heat and Dame Lillard um, you know, do have a trade together, then there might need to be a third team to take in some, another player from Miami. And so I would watch San Antonio to be one of those teams who might have to take in a player if, if and, and if they do, maybe, um, you know, they're seeking some draft assets or, or they just want whatever, whoever the player is, maybe they could, they could fit that player in. But they, again, they do have $26.8 million in cap space. So uh, if they need to be a third team, like they do, they were for Cleveland and Miami, that other deal, San Antonio is definitely a place that, um, you know, those teams will look at because they have all that cap space just sitting there right now. And like I said, a lot of the top free agents are already off the board. They've already signed, um, they've already chosen their teams. And also a uh, question I've been getting is how far are the Spurs from the minimum team salary? Because remember, there is a penalty that if you're not at the minimum team salary, 122.4 million by opening night, uh, you will only get a 50% tax distribution. And so the Spurs are almost there. They're basically sitting right now. Uh, when all these deals are complete, they're going to have $121.1 million in, in team salary. That's just $1.3 million short of the minimum team salary of 122.4. Um, you know, they can still, like I said, they can still waive players, trade players, and then sign some other free agents, or they may even give some of their free agents that they've agreed to maybe a little bump in their deals. That way they can kind of cross that 1.3, maybe give like, a, this is just an example, maybe like Trey Jones in year one gets like 10.5, Mamu gets 2.5, you know, those kind of things, giving those, those free agents uh, just a little bump in salary in year one of their new deals. That way they could cross that 1.3 and that way they know that they're safe. 
uh, going forward and they've met their, their requirements of meeting the minimum team salary. So those were some of the transactions that took place on Saturday um, for Project Spurs. I am Paul Garcia.